that most scary surveillance that surrounds us is actually the surveillance we can't grasp. It's the surveillance that collects actual normal day data, uh, and not the, the surveillance that's produced by um, cameras at the, uh, mounted on posts or, uh, at the street corner. It's more the, um, the collection, bulk collection of everything and the algorithm behind these data. And that's it's not shown in these images because this is something you cannot show, actually. What I like about this image is the way that all of them actually have to do with screens and surveillance and are kind of interfaced with the technology, whether it's a keyboard or looking at a smartphone or the CCTV camera or maybe just like an eye with all of these screens, perhaps looking at a bank of uh, closed circuit feeds. But one of the things with a lot of these stock images of um, surveillance is that who gets to use this surveillance, who's subjected to it, is often figured as white or light, at least or blue eyes, white hands on a keyboard, and gendered in a particular way. And so even with stock footage, it kind of absences um, those who are perhaps subject to maybe a lot more surveillance in city spaces, like with closed circuit TV, or um, perhaps who doesn't code and who doesn't get to learn how to code, and even who has um, access to these technologies through smartphones or dial-up or these types of things. I think it also gives life to some of the language that gets used and terminology that uh, we use as well. For example, just looking at the keyboard, this is what data mining would look like. This is how information is being gathered. This is how information is being, then patterns are being created and seen. And then similarly, the heavy use of biometrics, the eye, for example, I mean, that says quite a bit, just the, the looking at a person and trying to gather uh, the world out of that person um, and, and taking the iris scan and the retina scans and everything else. And then uh, the rest of it also gives life to it that how your phones are being tapped and how anything that you're doing on a cell phone that is being gathered and then the, the, the tools for the architecture of surveillance, the CCTV, it kind of gives life to the terminology that we use and the way we talk about surveillance. If we look at the kinds of images that get reproduced in news stories about surveillance technologies, they are images like these, which I think use uh, repetition and contrast between light and dark to create a, a sense of anxiety or foreboding. And I think that's noteworthy. So the repetition of the numbers, the repetition of the screens as communicating um, some sort of threat uh, of being outnumbered or outpaced. I, I just think it's interesting that the images that get reproduced over and over again tend to communicate a level of anxiety, the more dystopic side of tech discourses about technology as opposed to the more utopic side of those discourses. With the exception of the um, bottom right picture of the surveillance camera, which Contrasted against the other three seems quite outdated. You know, we've had surveillance cameras in our news feeds since the 80s. The surveillance camera is a pretty crude and visible tool. The top two look as if they've been influenced by Hollywood more than actual surveillance. You know, a computer screen glowing back at us that's in the language of the computer. It's not a language we understand. And the top two images seem to me as like illustrations because we can't grasp the scope and the ubiquity. But I agree with Rachel here. I am very anxious when I look at this collection or all together. The question we still need to ask ourselves always and going forward is like, how complicit are we in the surveillance and data mining of our information? It's talking about it, I think it, it, it kind of, it's a powerful tool uh, to uh, bring it to the communities and when we talk about it, just kind of using this as, as an opportunity to start that generate that conversation.